Hi, this is John from the Garmin Marine team. On this webinar, we want to go over the new products that we just announced at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, October 2021. As always, if you have any questions about this specific webinar, please contact us at marine.training at garmin.com. If you can't watch the entire webinar, or if you wanted to see past webinars, please go on to our Garmin YouTube channel. It's gonna be Garmin YouTube. It's under the Marine section and you can watch all of our past webinars. So let's go over the agenda here. I wanted to cover the products that we just announced at Fort Lauderdale Boat Show and also some of the products that we have recently introduced over the last couple months talk about some software updates that we've actually added in the last couple months and make sure that we cover fusion entertainment too for you guys first off we're going to cover ice fishing bundles the brand new phantom dome radars cameras so our new analog gc14 camera and our surround view bird's eye camera system. We're gonna cover Mercury engine integration, cartography updates, and software updates. So we'll go over the new landing page on our Garmin uh, website, sailing polars, data filtering, uh, a new cool feature on live scope where we can do a beam overlay when you run multiple live scopes and then on deck push notifications and fusion so with fusion we're going to announce some really cool new apollo amplifiers a brand new stereo the ra60 and some features in our software updates that are really beneficial uh, especially when you're on the water and you want to control your volume. So let's kick it off. Let's run through our 2021 2022 ice fishing bundle lineups and what's new. So, this is our entire lineup from our Striker series in a four inch all the way up to our Echo Map series in a nine inch unit. Uh, the big updates that you're going to see here is all of our striker series are now the striker vivid series so when you have a scanning transducer connected up you're going to get that uh, vivid color palettes on your sonar screen we've introduced the lithium batteries in our premium bundle and then we've also introduced the new transducer the lvs32 ice fishing transducer and we'll talk a little bit about that so we've got the striker vivid five ice fishing bundle our premium ice fishing bundle if you want the best of what we offer that's the live scope and a nine inch echo map unit and then our lvs 32 transducer so first off the live scope uh ice fishing bundle here what you're going to look at is we've added the new uh, 6.5 amp hour lithium ion battery pack. So it's, you know, three pounds, it's nine plus hours or pretty much all day you can use this. And it includes the new cable. So for those of you that have used LiveScope, this LVS32 ice fishing transducer is actually a, a new style. It's a silicone jacketed cable. So it's going to hold up in those tough, cold, uh, weather conditions. And as always, you got a, a nine inch echo map touch unit with button assist on there. The package actually comes with your LVS 32. So you've got forward and down live scope views. It's preloaded with Lakeview G3 maps. And that's 18,000 US lakes. Great Lakes are in there, both Canada and US signed are supported in this, in the package itself. And then for the year round use of this package here, you can add a transducer for the boat. We're going to talk about some of the um, separate boat packages that you can get. So you can take it out of your portable kit, snap it onto the mount in your boat, and then you're off to go during the summertime. 
easily able to use. It's uh, glove friendly. Um, and everything is included that you would need in the kit itself. A Striker Vivid 5 CV ice fishing bundle. Uh, so this is going to be a new five inch striker. I always talk about striker as this is a sonar with a free GPS. So you do have the ability, if you ever put this, uh, turn this on and you want to get some uh, mapping, you have quick draw contours that are built into this. But remember, this has no built in mapping in the unit or is it upgradable? But it, it's a great entry level five inch model. And it comes with the GT8 high wide ice fishing transducer for your traditional sonar. You also have your built in flasher, um, obviously built in GPS so you can mark your points. So you can back, go back to that same spot on the ice or go back during the summertime. And then we do support the Clearview transducers. So if you wanted to add a transducer at a later date, you can add that to it. Glove friendly. And you can easily move this from ice to boat with our boat kit accessory. So like I said, we have all season boat kits here that you can add uh, to most all the units that you see on here. We also came up with a live scope boat kit here. So you get your mount, your power cord, and your transducer. Allows you to snap it on there. The nice thing is the... Units that actually do side view, you're going to get the GT56 UHD transom mount. So you've got that ultra high definition scanning sonar built in with traditional sonar. This is one of the best transducers that we have made. And then the updated clear view boat kits are going to have that GT24 UHD transom mount transducers. So the 24 is going to give you both traditional chirp sonar and clear view. Um, showing you down imaging all in the one package there. And obviously that new live scope boat kit makes it easy for you to take that live scope and then mount it right on your boat. Phantom domes. So basing off our award-winning Phantom radars, we've gone to a couple new models here. And then obviously we've got a black model in the 18s and 24 inch, which is brand new. So what did we do to this? Uh, to add and just build on what we've done in the past year. So they're 18 inch and 24 inch domes. These are 50 watt solid state transmitters. So you're gonna get more power than the prior version. And then we also have the 60 RPM rotation speed. So that's gonna, uh, refresh your images quicker so you can actually determine targets that are moving faster on the screen a little bit better. We're going to have motion scope and that's probably the number one feature people are looking at in our solid state phantom radars. So that's gonna still stay in there. Target size, so you can go in there and change and redesign the target size that you see and to give you a better resolution of that particular target. Brand new also is this is optimized for power consumption. So for sailors or overnight cruisers, we have a new power save feature. We're improving the time transmit mode so we can fine tune that adjustment for both on and off. And you can see the average consumption, uh, you know, it's a lot less power draw than prior models. We also added a feature that was really in our, our open array scanning radars, and this is called scanning average. And I'm gonna give you an example of some recorded screen grabs here of scanning average, but it's gonna improve clutter, crosstalk. Um, this was a feature in our open arrays, and now that's brought to our Phantom X domes here in the 18 and the 24. So, in essence, what it's going to do is take when your phantom radar has the gain set up really high to see smaller targets, it, it's going to adjust those targets that are in the kind of in the background that you might not need to see and filter those out. We still get the great minimum range of 20 feet and then all the way out to 48 nautical miles. 
And like we said here, we've got the four different part numbers here in either the white or black. Scatting average, this is an uh, optional filter that we talked about before. So under your radar filters, you can go in and turn scanning average on. You've got three choices, low, medium, and high, depending on how much target, how many targets that you want to go ahead and scan out. So it's going to scan out random noise, wave returns, um, and then also detects consistent targets. So if you're if you're targeting, um, you know, a boat or a buoy, and that's going to come up on the screen more consistently when you use the scanning average. So let's take a look here, and we've got actually three um, images that you're going to see here for low, medium, and high. Uh, we've got the radar in the split screen. We have both range A and B. On B here, we're going to go in and put scanning average on low, and you can start to see the image on the right-hand side clear up a little bit. <clears throat> We'll go in here and we'll put it on medium and see that it'll clear up the screen a little bit more. But you notice the consistent targets that are larger here are popping up. Even some of the smaller targets are popping up here. So it's easy to see. And then finally, we'll turn scanning average on high. And what this will allow you to do is just give you more options to really better filter what you see on the screen to give you better situational awareness. So that's scanning averages brought into now our domes. So kind of a comparison of what is currently out, which is our Phantom 18s and 24s, and compared to the Phantom 18X and 24. So if we just go kind of down through the list here, it's really, you've got more power. You've got 10 watts more power in the new X series, uh, faster rotation rate, and then your power save feature, and then a black dome or white. Everything that you've known uh, in the past that you've really come to love in our Phantom solid state radars, which number one feature that we see with customers is motion scope. Motion scope gives you the ability with Doppler radar to identify targets moving towards you or going away from you. When they're coming towards you, they're going to show up as red. And then when they're going away from you, you're, they're going to show up as green. We have guard zones built in, just like we've had in the past. And then you can do the dual range with overlay. So these radars are really two radars in one because you can do split screens on it. You can do dual range. You can do radar overlay. Just remember, you want to make sure to add a heading sensor when you're doing the radar overlay. Camera systems, we, we did come out uh, this summer here with a brand new analog camera. And then we also came out with our brand new surround view bird's eye camera system. First off, so let's talk about the GC14. So this is a low light visibility analog camera. It can connect to any of your GPS map series. This is also backwards compatible to some of our legacy units. So if you have a 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 series, it is compatible with that. What we've improved in this is the low light uh, uh, visibility. Um, so you can see it up to 49 feet away, that image. Um, so that's the improvement over the prior generation, which was a GC12. Uh, you can mount it in any orientation because you can rotate it in that housing there. See the resolution there? So we're capable of broadcasting an image on one chart plotter or across multiple network compatible chart plotters, which that would be our current series, our GPS map series from the 743 all the way up to the 8624. Plug into one ethernet to the next units, and then you'll be able to see those images across the network. Surround view camera system. So this is really something you're going to start to see from our boat builders. We wanted to make sure that this OEM installed camera system is something that our consumers were aware of that's going to be out in the market. And this is really cutting edge technology that gives you that bird's eye view without even leaving the helm. So it's a 360 camera system here. 
six cameras installed on the boat and it gives you that that look and feel of a bird's eye image simultaneous video so you can view one or two cameras <clears throat> and bird's eye imaging at the same time you've got a visual bumper so just like you're used to on your vehicles now you're going to have a visual bumper that's going to show you um, the area around your boat that you want to target and warn when you're coming into dock and and make sure that you're you're getting into the proper area it's got distance markers so you can get that great situational awareness uh, it's a secure installation and you'll see it over here so we've got this on the bow of the boat um, we've got a couple others over on the side too so remember this is a six camera system and then these are the cameras here so they look nice they're the really low profile cameras and streamline aesthetics on our camera system. Some screenshots that you're gonna see here. So a visual bumper uh, shows the captain when they're close to any docks or objects. Um, and you can set up your barrier limits. You can adjust the distance of that visual bumper. The system would consist of six cameras and a black box, power cable, network cable. Um, and then the OEM is gonna figure out how to connect and along with our team, make sure to customize this camera system for that specific vessel. So six cameras, black box, and then our Garmin network cable to our chart plotters, all the current GPS map series this is going to be compatible with and then you can see an approximate location of the six camera system giving you that bird's eye imaging mercury integration so we're really excited this was uh, earlier this year we announced the software upgrades that allow with your uh, garmin mfds to be able to show smart craft connection from that integrated vessel view in mercury this is available now so mercury smart craft uh integration allows you to see engine data it's going to show you rpms fuel flow temp trim alarms and a much more uh we can do up to four engines the compatible chart plotters are all of our current gps map series from a seven inch unit all the way up to the uh 24 inch 8600 series you do see that we go back one series in our um seven nines and 12 inch units and then these are this is compatible with our echo map ultras 10s 12s and then the uhd 7 and 9. this is something that you're going to go to your mercury dealer because you're going to need to have the dealer and you're going to purchase the mercury smart craft interface they're going to do all the setup there at the dealership themselves and then there's another part that they would need and you'll take a look here and it's dependent upon your engine. So make sure you contact your local Mercury dealer. They can get you set up on the hardware side of it. Make sure that your Garmin software is updated to the latest version. And then this will just connect through the NEMA 2000 network. So our chart plotter, a basic NEMA 2000 backbone here, and then the SmartCraft Connect Gateway would connect into our systems here. Give you an idea what you're gonna actually see on the Mercury gauge page. So once you're connected, your software is up to date on the Garmin and Mercury side, you're gonna see under gauges and controls here, the Mercury icon pop up, and then that allows you to see everything Mercury is gonna to output to us on the Garmin, Garmin screen itself. Our traditional engine page will still be on your chart plotter. This is generally for other non-Mercury engines on the vessel, such as generators, but you can populate that Mercury engine in information into this uh, screen here, but it's not gonna be your primary case now that you have the Mercury SmartCraft connection. Cartography, so we wanna talk a little bit about some of the updates in September. We had a, a pretty big update on our uh, cartography and then also wanted to update everyone on our Navionics boat app. So 
unparalleled coverage. This is worldwide. So with the acquisition of Navionics a few years ago, and then the combination of Garmin cartography and Navionics blended together, uh, we're, we're going to give you the best information and most detailed charts for not only the U.S., Canada, but around the world. So we've updated relief shading. You'll see us some screenshots here um, of the different areas. So make sure when you, um, you know, when you see us at a show later on in the year and next year, you know, take a look at some of the areas of coverage that are pertinent to you, both in coastal and in lakes because we've actually have some new surveyed lakes here. And you can see it from you know, California to Texas, to Arkansas, Kentucky, and then around the world. So we've added uh, new lakes around the world in Poland, South, Af uh, South Africa, uh, Latvia. So you're really gonna get the most detailed charts for anywhere that you're actually boating. This was released this year, September. Um, and then the latest version is, 2022.0. So just make sure you have the latest uh, charts on your vessel itself. And you always know that you can update your charts through Active Captain or Garmin Express. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So our Navionics boating app. So Navionics boating app, this is a uh, paid app. What you would do is make sure you download the app purchase the coverage area that you want for anywhere that you want. Um, and then this will allow you to go in and use the connections portions of it. So this is great for both iOS and Android. You can search your network, either Garmin or Navionics and Active Captain users, and it makes it easy for you to connect with friends and share your live locations. Uh, you can share your saved items like tracks, routes, and markers. So it's used a lot in regattas or fishing tournaments, or if you're just generally cruising along and you wanted to give somebody maybe that peace of mind so they can see where you're at when you're going out on a cruise or you're just fishing for the day and you want to let them know, here's where I'm at, here's where I'm going, and um, share that information and position through the Navionics Boating app. So I wanted to talk a little bit about September 2021 software updates and a couple new features that maybe some of you aren't aware of. Number one is our landing page on Garmin.com. So if you go into Garmin.com and you take a look at our uh, the area where you can see under support and marine device software updates, we've added some really cool features that weren't uh, available in the past and a lot more information. First off, you can see more. So links to software marketing memos. Now consumers have the ability to go in, click on what's new, and it'll give you a list of actually what was just released in, for example, this September software update. It also allows you to go backwards and see links to prior software updates. So that's beneficial because you can look through and see if that was an update that maybe you missed, or maybe it was a feature that you've actually updated your software. You weren't aware that now your unit can do something new. And so that's where you can kind of go back and take a look at it. It also gives you the link to the Active Captain app, Garmin Express, our support center, and then a link to manually download the software update. So a lot of times our dealers and installers use this to manually download software updates the old fashioned way to an SD card. And then that'll allow them to update customer software without going in and using Active Captain. So what's new with our software updates? So we wanted to let you know that we have a, a really big focus on sailing. So we've added sailing polar datas, uh, data. So the polar tables will add support in the Garmin chart plotters now to make the best use of your sales. So obviously it's gonna take all the information that we're gathering from our G-Wind instrumentation, um, populate data fields, ley lines, start line guidance, 
and it's going to allow that chart plotter to calculate the optimal speed per the current wind angle at which to sail at the highest speed. So we can go to third party um, sites and download the polars and then add them to the chart plotter. It's pretty simple. We've actually added some areas here where you can go into and find that uh, polar table and add that to an SD card. Once you've added that, you're gonna be able to then put the SD card into your Garmin chart plotter. You're gonna be able to select the file that you wanna download and then import the file into your Garmin chart plotter. We have created um, a new FAQ section on Polars in our Garmin support page. So if you just go to garmin.com uh, and then you look at our support page under Polars, you'll be able to see uh, frequently asked questions that our product support team has done a great job in being able to answer that. So this is brand new for us. Next, data filtering. So now you have the ability to go in and apply uh, filtering data on select data fields within your Garmin chart plotter. It's going to be under instrumentation and filtering settings. So this reduces the uh, possibility of flickering or data on the data values, such as like wind and drift and speed. So you can easily interpret this to give you that better sailing experience. So you can go in there. These numbers are set to where the filter is either zero off or eight maximum filtering. So you get the most fluid instrument data on your Garmin chart plotter. This is a really cool feature. This came from one of our Garmin pros. We see a lot of people now taking our live scope and connecting two live scopes to a trolling motor or maybe a trolling motor and another um, pole and using them simultaneously. That's great. You have the ability to do it. But what happened in the past was you didn't know when you were in perspective mode and forward mode, really what direction your transducers were pointing. You'd have kind of a general idea or how much coverage area that you would have. So what this gives us is the ability on the chart plotter live scope page is to see the transducer, see the orientation of the transducer and the overlay. So I can actually see that I have um, in this image here, my forward beam, which is this one here, shows me how much of my forward beam and in which direction it's showing, and then in my perspective. So perspective is gonna give us <clears throat> a little bit larger area of coverage. So when we're trying to find those fish in this particular area, and if I had live scope on a separate pole, this would allow me to scan through this separately. So I could move it individually. If I had it on the same axis, like on the same trolling motor shaft, I would just move my trolling motor and then I could see this portion of the live forward beam. Let's say that there was a, a fish that was showing up over here. <clears throat> I know that I need to turn towards the starboard side or to the right side in order to see those fish in my forward imaging. And then that would pop up on here. So that's a brand new software update called Beam Overlay. So in this image here, we can see that there's something large off to kind of the left of the beam of my forward. And then I can go ahead and see in my forward Im imaging here, that bridge. And um, so it gives you kind of a different perspective and allows you to really target the fish much better, especially when you're running the two live scopes simultaneously. On deck. So on deck is our ability to track, monitor, and control switches remotely, uh, subscription-based 
And what we want to let everyone know that we've actually added push notifications with this. We've already had the ability to get emails and text messages, but this now gives us push notifications. So it's really neat about this here is we can go into our Active Captain app and we can turn on push notifications. We've already seen that we have text messages turned on and email turned on. And then that'll give us an alert, push alert right to our phone. And in this case here, it's letting us know that voltage is too low. This is a feature that many of our both consumers and our, our installers and dealers wanted. So installation verification allows the customer boat builder to go in and verify and troubleshoot. This will allow you to detect sensors and relays to make sure they're working and shown on the network properly. And then also provide uh, on deck diagnostic data within this verification page. You can ask, so for consumers, uh, you're gonna probably access this through your Active Captain app and you go into settings and on deck diagnostics. So this allows, especially an installer, to go in and dig deep into this and note it and make sure that his install is done properly and all the sensors are identified on the network without uh, the installer having to have a subscription to that on deck hardware. Fusion. So our Fusion Entertainment just came out with some really cool new amps a entry level source unit for your stereo system and then some great software updates. We are excited to announce the Apollo amplifiers. I'm fortunate enough to have one. I've, I've had the ability to uh, install it, work with it. First off, a lot of power. That's the number one thing that you're gonna see from our, our amps is the power that you're looking at greater clarity in the sound, increased power protection with internal uh, electronic fusing, and then an ease of installation. So this is designed in-house. This is a true Garmin product. Um, we have high power adapters that allow, it, allow you to easily bridge the system itself. Um, and then quick connections that allow you to wire the, the wires in your hand and snap in to the amp itself. So let's take a look at the Apollo amplifier. Um, some of the features here, like I said, easy installations. So you can wire in hand, snap into the amp itself. These are true marine designs. So when you're out there comparing amplifiers on the market itself, these have an industry leading three year warranty. These are focused and based upon just like all of our other true marine products to be able to withstand those harsh marine environments. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the high power mode, allowing you to uh, bridge the different systems simply and easily. The lineup is gonna consist of an eight, six and four channel. Uh, we do have a zone, two channel zone amplifier and then the mono block, um, if you want to call it your sub amp, we have that available too. Biggest thing you're going to see here, 150 watt RMS per channel. So we've got a lot of power out there. When you're comparing to uh, others in the marine market, you know, this is one of the big things that people are looking for is the power the ease of installation, and then next is the great sound that you're gonna get out of it. So we have an easy tune feature. And what we mean by that is utilizing the Fusion uh, Link app, you can go in and connect to your DSP enabled stereo, which would be our Apollo series, 770, 670, and then the uh, the um, box series, the WB670, and then even the RA210 all have DSP built into it. And then with that, it can take the values of your speakers, which are preloaded in there, 
fusion speakers, remember that, your head unit, and then your amps. And then we, we can optimize the sound coming out of that amplifier um, for the vessel that you have your speakers on and the location of the speakers themselves. We talked a little bit about the amplifier and some of the parts. Number one is the mounting bracket. So this is a great design. The benefit to this mounting bracket is the well, amps are heavy. They're generally tucked away in a spot that's really hard to get to. So it's really hard to wire the amps themselves and to mount the amp. So what you can do with this is you can take this mounting bracket, <clears throat> you can mount it to a bulkhead. It actually has the locking mechanism here. Uh, these have been tested to take the harsh environments to pounding on a boat. And so what you can do is mount it to a bulkhead and then on the back of your amp, you have some tabs that'll fit into your mounting bracket itself. You can lock it in and then put your locking tab on top. And then that is perfectly secure within that bracket itself. Or if you wanted to, you can still mount it the old traditional way. Connectors, I talked a little bit about the connectors here. So simple plug-in power connectors, speaker connectors, RCA connectors for output. Uh, and then we'll talk about the high power adapter. So here we've got our power connector and then we've got our amp on trigger. So snap it in there. We've got our, this is the before and this is the after. So that's our speaker connection. So it's nice, we can take this and we can wire our speakers in here, connect in, snap it in there. And so it's nice and secure. And then we've got your uh, traditional RCA connections. So high power mode. How did we make bridging easier with this system here? We did it a couple different ways, but we have this high, high power adapter. So when you need to bridge a speaker, we can then take this speaker connection here. We can take the high power adapter, take it over the top of the speaker itself, and then we can wire into this connector itself. So what it'll do is actually this hidden magnet here then triggers that splitter that you would have to use in the past, that RCA Y splitter, then also that triggers the amp to know that it's going to um, use the splitter internally. So then we're just connecting to the RCA port here, and now we've got the high power mode. So it makes it simple and easy for our boat builders, for the everyday consumer that wants a simple, easy, high, high powered amp and get the best sound out of it. They can use uh, you know, the Apollo amps and then this simple bridge connector. So I can't emphasize this enough. This is really building upon our complete ecosystem. So the sum of the three parts are gonna be the greatest that you're gonna actually, uh, greatest sound that you're gonna, gonna get when you add fusion Apollo head units with DSP built in. So that's digital signal processing. Uh, the Apollo amps, and then the Fusion speakers. You know, if you're using the Signature 3 speakers, this is a great system to combine all of those together. Um, you've got to use Fusion DSP head units in order for them to work with the Apollo amps. And then with this Fusion Link app, you can go ahead and set that up and get the best sound of, out of everything. Next up, a brand new entry level RA60 Marine Stereo. Uh, this stereo is built in house. It actually works with our ARX70. So that's gonna be an upgrade from the prior model RA55. This is a two zone stereo. Uh, it has two amplified zones. It will fit the cutout of the RA55 and you can do um, over the air wireless software updates through Bluetooth. So just remember this unit can do the software updates through Bluetooth and then your other Apollo series head units are gonna do that through Wi-Fi. You can um, control this through the Fusion Link app uh, for Europe, 
In Australia, we've got the built-in uh, DAB tuner for that digital uh, stereo. And then the great IPX6 and 7 on the front, so you, you know that this can stand up to the uh, wet, harsh conditions on a boat. The audio sourcing that's built into this is Bluetooth. You have an aux port on there, AM, FM, and then that DAB plus for Europe and Australia. And I want to, this is more than just a cable. This is, this is a ethernet cable that we came out with. Um, number one, to make sure to connect from our Garmin MFDs to the Fusion Apollo series. This will allow you a couple different things. So <clears throat> number one, you wanna make sure that you're uh, using Wi-Fi to play Apple AirPlay 2. So Apple AirPlay 2 is the highest quality audio that you can play, and that's played over Wi-Fi. But just remember our 670 series, either the black box or white box, I should call it, or the 670 head unit, they do not have built-in Wi-Fi, but you can use your Garmin MFD, your GPS map series, as the Wi-Fi access point. So make sure that you're not only connecting NEMA 2000 in this Apollo series to the network, but also connect the Ethernet cable. Utilize this cable here because you'll see on the other end of it here, you've got that... Um, connection that'll allow you to get in, especially on that WB670. It's a pretty tight area there to get into. And if you had a huge locking collar on there, you really can't connect it. So utilize these cables and unlock the full potential of your Fusion Entertainment System. Software updates. We did a few um, neat software updates here on the Apollo series. So that's gonna be on the 770, 670, uh, the ERX 400 and the RA 210. So what we did on that is speed versus volume, uh, volume ratios, mono audio, and zone gain settings. So let's talk a little bit about this speed versus volume. Just like many people have had in their vehicles in the past, you know, when you're going at a faster rate, your audio is going to increase in volume, and then when you slow down it slows down with the vehicle. Well, now we can do that through our Apollo series units. Um, and the way that we can actually do this is you need to be connected through a speed source. So that's important if you're connected via NEMA 2000, that your speed source is detected. And then under speed versus volume, you can go in and choose if you're gonna do engine speed, speed over ground, um, you know, wind speed, but you need to make sure that you're connected. And then that volume will adjust appropriately for that different speed that you're traveling. So volume ratios. What's nice about this is when you have a multi-zone Apollo stereo system here, in the past, if you were controlling the volume on all of your zones simultaneously, it was either Everyone started out at zero and then ended up at certain value of 15. Well, now we can go in and actually adjust it. So let's say zone one is our main zone. And, uh, you know, maybe that's, um, you know, the cockpit area. And then this might be up, you know, up on the bow area. And we want those zones when we're turning the system down to obviously all zero out when we want no sound at all. But then when we turn them up, maybe we didn't want zone two, which might be down in a cabin area. Well, we wanted that to be lower. So now we can individually adjust and have those zones adjust simultaneously. Mono audio. If you're in a vessel and you, you know, why would you use mono? A lot of people will look through their uh, Apollo head unit and they see this mono. Well, here's where you would actually utilize it. So in this example here, we're in zone one, okay? And if we're in the pilot house here, 
and we're either left or right, port or starboard side that we're operating the vessel from or we're sitting here. If we had it in stereo mode, it would sound kind of weird because we would only get or hear because we're so close to that speaker on the left-hand side, the stereo coming out of this here, and we probably wouldn't hear everything over on this side. So that's a good time to put this in mono. And then that way we get both left and right channel uh, playing out of the one speaker. But in the back here, aft deck, we would want to keep that in stereo. So we get that true stereo kind of surround experience. And now you can go in and adjust that in the Apollo series. Uh, zone gain setting. So if you need to adjust the gain um, in your built-in amplifier or any connected external amplifier, in this example, we're talking about the Apollo amplifier. Uh, remember in the Apollo amp, you do not have any physical gain controls like you do on our signature series. So now you can go into the source unit here and adjust that particular gain. So you can increase or decrease the gain of either the external amp like here, or if it's just powering it through the internal amp gain. So I wanna thank you. That's a brief overview of what we just announced at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show for 2021. Uh, as always, I want to thank everyone for attending. You can always see these if you wanted to go back and review this webinar on our Garmin YouTube channel under Garmin Marine. And as always, if you wanted to go back and take a listen to some of our podcasts behind the chart plotter, please go ahead and visit some of our podcasts. I think we did 10 uh, podcasts in the past there. And if you have any specific questions about this particular webinar, please email us at marine.training at garmin.com and we'd be glad to answer your questions. And as always, I want to thank you uh, from the Garmin Marine team and we will see you on the water. Thank you.